Hey and welcome to 31 Days of Horror. Uh, we are halfway there, it's been two weeks full of movies and I'd just like to sum it up wh what's it been like for me so far and most stuff I've been reviewing ha ha has been from the 1980s. About six movies were from the 1980s, then two more, Summer of 84 and The House of the Devil were throwback movies which were also set in the 1980s. And uh, I'd just like to uh, just kind of make a little ranking here. I thought uh, the most neglected gem, which I was super happy to discover for me, was the Mike Hodges movie Black Rainbow. I reviewed it early on and somehow this movie has never ever showed up on my radar. And it's one of those movies where I'm wondering, where was it all these years? So I'm really glad I discovered that one. It's a movie starring... Rosanna Arquette. It's a wonderful uh, ghost story. Not much of traditional or uh, horror content in that film, but it's extremely, extremely well crafted, atmospheric, some great location uh, shooting. I loved it. It's a great movie. Then the most heartfelt movie I thought was probably Luigi Cozzi's uh, Blood Amelia Moon. It's it's a super cheap DIY movie which is a bit too long it's over two hours long so for such a no budget film it's it, it's a bit over long but the movie is just so packed with exciting little nerdy moments and just it's such a love letter to cinema in general and fun cinema in particular and extremely unpretentious so i, I really wish that film had a bit more exposure it's not well acted, it's not terribly enticing for people, uh, fans of quality cinema, but <laughs> I don't know, it, it found a place in my heart uh, instantly. The most uh, pretentious uh, movie so far has been uh, Barbarian Sound Studio. I don't know, you can watch my review if you wish. I just really thought this film had so much potential and then it wasted it. The most uh, satisfying movie has probably been um, House of the Devil, Ty West. Uh, the House of the Devil, which it's a movie that does not stay its welcome. It's aesthetically dead on the money, considering it's uh, aiming to look like a 1980s movie. It really does. It doesn't try to be something more than it is. It's just a straight up uh, horror movie without any meta, without any of that um, pretentious dimension. So really cool movie. The most disappointing movie has been uh, Toby Hooper's Poltergeist. A movie I couldn't even finish watching. Maybe it was just the wrong day, I don't know. I'm kinda, these last few days I've been a bit lower on energy. Maybe it's just caught me in the, in the wrong moment, but I definitely couldn't bring myself to watch it all, all the way through. I had very low expectations and even those haven't been met, so I just, mm, I was a little bit uh, let down. You know, when, when you stumble on a movie which manages to let you down so much, it puts the whole concept of this 31 days marathon a little bit in doubt which it makes you wonder am i wasting time here why am i even doing this so i dislike it when films like this happen but but you know this is inevitable because it's not a pre-programmed thing you just take a movie you take a chance on the movie the most surprising movie and the most intelligent movie so far has been um, bad biology from the 2000s it's a frank and lotter production very edgy and full of ideas crude movie but clever Definitely not a stupid film. It's not going to be to everyone's taste because it deliberately it's, it provokes you. I was so surprised that movie also never really um, showed up anywhere on my newsfeed. No one's ever seemed to speak about it, so I'm glad I made the discovery. Bad Biology is a movie I'm going to be adding to my collection, even though, again, it's not a straight horror. It's more like just a clever movie with a lot of uh, crude content. And the movie that's, um, that I'm most in love with has got to be The Gates of Hell, but that, that one I've seen before, I just, I had to really definitely bring it up, a Lucio Fulci classic. So what are the plans for the second half of this month? I'd like to fit in at least one Mario Bava film, I think I will try and watch at least one more Wes Craven film. So far I've covered Shocker, um, uh, which I enjoyed. It wasn't brilliant, but I enjoyed it. And I'm going to cover one more, at least one more Wes Craven. The rest, it's still 
undecided ever pilot movies which my friend Kevin has uh, supplied me with so I can at least pick and choose a few from those but I still don't have a fixed schedule for the upcoming uh, two weeks so I'll just uh, you know make random choices and I just hope I don't I don't burn my fingers too bad so uh, that's my uh, experience uh, so far with uh, 31 uh, days of horror I was really pleased to see that my viewership seems to have increased through this uh, experiment I seem to have uh, gained a couple of uh, friends here on YouTube which is really cool to be able to uh, chat uh, with other people so it's been rewarding it's been frustrating just like life you know a bit of good and a bit of uh, this 31 days of horror also made me uh, reflect generally on my film fandom and how I'm not as flexible as I used to be how I'm not as hungry for movies as I used to be I tend to be a lot more picky these days I can't just grab a movie and watch it because that hunger isn't there because we're in such a media saturated landscape now all those um, social media things they kind of drain you of any curiosity to discover something some works of art so I, I find that if I look look back 10 years back or even longer and, and, and I'm a lot more exhausted due to my presence on various social media platforms so that's definitely robbing me of uh, my uh, film uh, viewing enthusiasm yeah thanks a lot for watching my update i'll uh, see you a bit later with uh, another one of 31 days of horror